Hey guys, this is Nate Story with Bright Agritech, and today we're going to be talking about sizing pumps and how to think about pump ratings, whether it is gallons per hour or horsepower. When you're thinking about pumps, there are two metrics which rise to the surface most commonly. There's gallons per hour and there is horsepower. And this can be really, really confusing for people. People ask what the horsepower is on a small submersible or the gallons per hour on a larger horsepower pump. So um, the reason this is confusing is because uh, they're really kind of ultimately talking about very similar things. Horsepower is the power of the motor and gallons per hour is how much uh, solution the pump will pump at level uh, within an hour. So the most common metric that people deal with is gallons per hour and this is really common especially in hydroponic systems when you're dealing with small submersible pumps. Almost all of these things have a GPH rating and um, if you are looking at pumps on websites you'll see kind of these these tables, these graphs which will show you kind of how they how they pump at different uh, heights. Um, and uh, basically explaining, you know, at uh, five feet in the air, you know, this is 100 gallons per hour, this is 200. Um, basically explaining how much this will pump at these different heights. And um, this is really common in small submersible sumps, mostly because these, these, uh, these pumps are so small that they don't really have horsepower ratings, they're tiny. Like most of these are, are just a couple of amps. Um, so 0.4 amps, you know, it's a tiny, tiny pump, but it's also really efficient. So because it's so small and so uh, efficient, they just rate it with the gallons per hour rating. It's too small to really talk about horsepower or the power of the pump. Now, when you start, uh, when you start talking about gallons per hour with these big pumps, it becomes a bit of a misnomer because you're dealing with such large numbers that it's just simply easier to talk about the pump power. So to be clear, on horsepower pumps, there's still a GPH rating. If you go to the manufacturer's website, they'll list it there. But oftentimes it's like a thousand gallons per minute or what have you if you're dealing with really large horsepower uh, pumps. You know, the smallest one uh, that we use that is horsepower rated is about a half horsepower pump. I've seen quarter horsepower pumps, but most of the time, by the time you're talking about a quarter of a horse, you are talking about... Um, gallons per hour, right? It's small enough again that gallons per hour is a small enough number to think about, to use, and to uh, use in all of our calculations. So this is about the smallest you'll ever see, a one, a one half horse pump, and um, this goes all the way up to five horses, six horses, 10, 15 horses for very, very large um, applications. So when we're talking those kinds of volumes, it's just easier to talk about horsepower, even though there is a gallon per hour rating that goes with each and every pump. Just by the nature of their size, most horsepower pumps are inline pumps. So these are pumps where you have a motor that is uh, housed separately from the pump housing. So this is where the water is moved. And oftentimes if they're pool pumps like we use, you also have a skimmer. But ultimately if you took the skimmer off altogether, you just basically have uh, have where the water flows in and the water pumps out of the impeller housing right here. So by and large horsepower is in line. That's not always true, but usually true. And gallon per hour is submersible. So for most hobby applications we use submersible pumps. Why? Because we don't actually need to move that much water. And uh, you know these things are really great little pumps. They're reliable, they last a long time. The drawbacks are that they are, they are smaller. Um, they are water cooled and so they will heat your water up as they are kind of sunk in there and as they're pumping. Um, but by and large, they're inexpensive, they're reliable, and they do a great job at low volumes. Now, as our applications get bigger and bigger and bigger, once you start, start to talk about a zip farm or something like that, all of a sudden you're talking about a much larger pump. And this is typically the pump we start with and that we use for almost all of our zip farm applications just because it's big enough to work in almost every scenario. But this is a big pump. This moves a lot more water than this pump ever could or would. Um, there are some intermediary kind of submersible pumps that are about halfway between this and this. Uh, but the bigger the submersible pump gets, the more expensive it gets. And the more sense it makes to think about transitioning from tr submersible up to an inline pump like this. For the most part, if you're thinking about uh, using a pump, 
I would say uh, think about using a submersible at relatively small scales. If you're moving less than, say, 1,000 gallons per hour, a submersible is going to work fine for you. If you're moving a lot more than that, you should think about a much larger pump. Also, if you have concerns about your solution overheating or in your very, you're in a very hot environment, I would also look into an inline pump. This dumps the heat into the air, not into your water. If you're in a cold environment, that heat can be useful, and uh, it's worth considering a submersible just to transfer that heat to solution in much colder environments. If you're in a hot environment, though, um, inline pumps are going to be dumping the heat into the air, and uh, by and large, they are a great type of pump. They're easily accessible. They're easy to wire. Uh, on these pumps, because they're more pricey, you want to replace uh, parts as opposed to the pump if possible. Um, and it's much more of a kind of durable, long-term investment when you buy a pump like this. Another question that comes up is the difference between aquaponics and hydroponic systems. So it really, again, just depends on the size. I will say that I have had issues in the past with submersible pumps having um, basically uh, leaky wiring, you could call it. And it's kind of electrifying uh, the solution, which of course doesn't make the fish particularly happy. So it's just something to stay on top of and make sure that you've got an eye on. And uh, a lot of the time you will know if you have any issues there. Uh, by and large, most aquaponic uh, systems that I deal with are large enough that you are thinking about using an inline pump and most likely using an inline pump. I will also say that in aquaponic systems, having a skimmer can be a really, really helpful tool. Uh, for skimming out some of the larger objects that just tend to make their way into the system. So to uh, kind of just run through the entire thing again, uh, if you're running a smaller system, let's say less than a thousand gallons per hour, and you know how big your system is, you know how many plants are there, if you know there's 10 gallons per plant per hour, you know that you need a hundred plants uh, to size a 1,000 gallon per hour pump, right? Um, so all of those calculations are out there. You can figure out how to do them. At smaller levels, you're using these pumps, almost guaranteed. However, once you start getting into gallon per minute calculations, once you start talking about thousands and thousands of gallons per hour, we have to start talking about horsepower rated pumps or these larger inline pumps. That's when the game gets serious and you need to start moving some bigger volumes. Now, there are a lot of sizings here, so there are a lot of opportunities to kind of fit the pump uh, to the system appropriately. And the same kind of calculations that you do at a small scale are relevant at a large one. So if you're putting in a big system, you should have done the math. You should know exactly how much volume you need to be moving in your system. And I know we've done some videos on this, so check those out. Um, but you'll know those numbers. And then you just basically need to match those numbers with the right pump. Thanks so much for watching, guys. We hope these videos are really helpful to you. In order to get you even better content, it's really, really helpful to us if you're responding to us, if you're sending us videos, questions, comments, basically pointing us in the right direction towards building content that is perfect for you and delivers you the information that you want to hear. So please, please engage. We really appreciate it. It helps us out a lot. I'll also note there's a blog post on this as well as a bunch of other resources on the website, so make sure you check that stuff out. And as always, please subscribe.